Welcome guys, TPC Toronto. Uh, what you're seeing, obviously, construction zone. It's gonna be quite the, uh, quite the destination in the next couple of years with all the stuff going on. Two new golf courses across the street, all these clubhouses going up. Um, so, welcome today. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys haven't hit balls for four hours before, so it's quite the long day, but that's why there's a chair there. So have a seat, sit down, take a break, check your phone, do what you gotta do. But the, uh, the reason I do this is because I find the one hour golf lesson doesn't really work as well. You know, trying to get through all kinds of different things in an hour just isn't enough time, especially when you need time to kind of work through some of those ideas. So I'm going to come by, we're going to have a chat about your game, find out, you know, what's going on, what do you want to fix, um, and I'm going to give you some stuff to think about. The first time I come by, it's going to be really big. I'm going to give you some big concepts and some big ideas, but the next time I come back after you've had a chance to practice, hopefully that gets a little bit easier for you. Um, and I'm going to continue doing that kind of rotation. I'll come back and see what's going on. And I do this thing called layering, where we tackle the hardest things first and we get a little bit easier as the day goes on. Um, and hopefully by the end of the session, you know, you, you've got two or three words to make the whole thing work. Those two or three words are in kind of a rhythm or a beat or a song to your swing, so to say. And, uh, you know, you can go to the driving range and practice some pretty simple things. Um, I would say that, you know, in the next hour and a half, I do want you to get to your driver. I'd like to get to the driver sooner than later. I find that most times in a golf lesson, you know, if you want to fix your driver, you do it at the end when you're tired. We're not going to do that here. I want to get right to it. Um, and then hour three is going to be wedges. So whatever it is that we've done for the first two hours, we're going to tackle it with your wedges to kind of slow the speed down, give you a chance to be a little more, you know, dramatic with it or, or you know, emphasize it a little more. And then the last hour is when I'm going to come by and just reconfirm things. It won't be anything new in the last hour. It'll just be kind of making sure that we've got the right things in the right order so that, you know, you have a chance to go practice and get this better. So um, we've got lots of golf balls. We've got drinks. Like I said, you got a chair. So let's get to it. So how's your game been this year? Uh, okay. Yeah? Um, I guess I'm always trying to work on consistency and stuff like that. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Typically have a one-way miss unless I'm really doing something wrong, but okay. I find uh, just watching my divots every now and then I'll take one really, really fat. Yep. So, okay. Um, Are you taking lessons before? Yeah, taking a couple lessons, yeah. What were, what's been like the overall theme of those? Shallowing it out. Okay. Um, making sure I'm inside, which is always a kind of struggle. Okay. Um, yeah, and then just staying in posture too. Okay. I find they collapse a lot, and then that can lead to hitting it bad and stuff like that. So. Okay. When, when was the last time you took a lesson? Uh, maybe a year ago. A year ago? Yeah. Okay. So, so, from what I've seen in a couple swings, yeah. you're way too shallow. Okay. You're way too inside out. Way too inside. Yeah. But well, let's hit some and kind of have a chat about it. So if, if the club hits the ground early, yeah. that's too shallow. Okay. okay. That's usually a sign of too inside out. Um, so that when the club would get to the ball, it would already be rising. And so like it doesn't hit the ground right. where a steep one would be where the divots really, really thick and it starts in front of the ball. Right. That would be the opposites. Again, a reason from like that only happens when you come inside out on it. Um, no one goes outside in and hits the hosel. Okay, um, there's some big things that I'd like to work on today, so let's, let's go take a look at what you're doing and get on track. So, so when you get this club working back, yeah. you've got a lot of the arms and club working around your body, okay. so we can kind of see how your left elbow starts to pull behind you, okay. right? And when you get over here, yeah. like the, 
the arms across your chest pretty good, which is obviously a good thing in the swing. But as you come down, right now, we see too much of this arm. Your hand is way too far behind you at this stage of the game. Yeah. So as it starts to come down here, it's coming down way from the inside. Yeah. So today what I want to do is work on your backswing where we feel as though that what starts your backswing is you're trying to turn the front of your torso to the camera okay. rather than pull the arms around your body. Okay. So at this stage of the game, like right here, yeah. the backswing, we're going to try and feel as though that it's more, well, I guess left-handed here, it's more that way to get this here rather than this way. Okay. So, so like... like It'll feel out for sure. It'll definitely feel like your arms are coming in my direction this yeah. way. So set up again. It's going to feel like this moves and that moves back in a way. Keep so turn. Okay. Take the club with you. Yeah. Okay, turn more, turn more, turn more, turn more. See how much you're putting into that club? Yeah. Right. Don't do that. Let go. Smooth it out. Soften it up. Good. Turn more. Look at the ground. Where the ball would be. That's kind of where I want you to feel today. That the club is still in front of you and you've turned all of this to move your arms rather than try to go from here keep this still and pull back okay. follow me so more. yeah back down one more time okay so do it again turn keep turning don't push it don't soften keep turning keep turning keep turning okay hold it there soften 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 okay there more turn less with your arms but when you go back like this and you start ripping the arms around you, yeah. right, you're not getting the turn happening. Gotcha. Okay, so let's go back to your spot. So this is going to be a little bit different in terms of your trigger off the golf ball. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like your grip's good, your setup is good, but when you use your arms to pull the club back to me, it's putting too much into that golf club too early. Okay, so slowly swing it to me. Right, turn, 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 keep turning, keep turning. Good. It's almost like the arms and hands did nothing to here. Okay. Okay, and now as you go up, yeah. if we have a wall back here behind your heels, yeah. I need you to lift it up without hitting the wall. Up, 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 up. That's the feeling today. Okay, come on over here and look. Okay, so just to practice it, take it up to the top, hold it up there. Right, avoid the wall behind you. Good. And now just swing through and hold it. Okay, so the finish position today, I want this space narrowed up, right? So watch me when I finish my swing. See how okay. tight that is? Yeah. So in the golf swing, we're not trying to like overturn things. Like we're not firing the hips through the ball. Yeah. All we're trying to do is make sure that the legs turn and face the target. Because if my, if my thighs are facing the target, then everything above that also faces the target. Okay. I mean, all of our speed is already out by there. We just have to find a way to finish it. So if I get all my speed out to there, yeah. turn my knees together and stand tall like I'm here. And just to give you an idea of where I think we're going to go with all this, when you get more comfortable with the backswing and where you're ending up, I want to increase your tempo. Okay. So when you take it back here, it's almost like there's a break and a pause, yeah. and then you go from there. Yeah. So we're not quite getting any speed from the change in direction. Okay. So like there's all there's this drill out there that you know go to the top pause and then hit it yeah. i need the exact opposite from you yeah yeah so like every golfer yeah. right i mean and youtube's done that for us you can watch yeah. ten thousand videos and six thousand of them contradict each other yeah. so set up your shot the feeling is that your arms go in this direction off the takeaway so you're trying to get your arms to go out here and don't let them get behind that. There you go. And I'd say, like, I don't like teaching too much when it comes to feel. Yeah. Right? I like to give you a concept, and what you feel is what you feel. Right. Um, but if you're, if you've got over squeezing in the arms, yeah. then that means that they're the ones controlling everything. And I want the upper body to feel loose. Right? It's your legs that should be the ones that are squeezing. Just to give you kind of a, a picture in your head of what maybe the swing might look like for now. Yeah. Um, stand right here in front of me. Yeah, right there. So we're trying to feel like we can go out with the arms, yeah. right? Turn the body in order for the arms not to get too deep, okay. right? So they're going to go out that way a little yeah. bit. But then finish position or shot style, I want you to feel like you're almost finishing your swing lower. 
right? Finishing this lower down here. If you're going from here and you start to swing fast all the way up to there, that's when those happen. That's when we kind of miss it. So the speed of the arms in the downswing, yeah. it's a chopping motion like, like this, up, down. Okay. So once I turn my body, yeah. now my chop's over here. And if I just turn toward the target, see how it starts to chop toward the target? Right, but right. I don't want to feel like I take my arms and swing them toward the target. Okay. okay? So I'm going to use my arms and my hands to feel like I hit down on the ball. But as long as the front of my body goes that way, it looks like it's a full swing. Right. Here, down. Okay? So trying, to, trying not to power the arms on the way through, like... I must talk about this five times a week. Like a lot of the videos I have on YouTube are a lot about like, hey, like we can't get the arms to travel down, across, and up. That's not the speed of the arms. Right. The peak arm speed in the swing is here. Right. And as soon as we stop the arms, that's where the club releases. Like I remember reading Golf Digest when I first learned to play, they talked about the release was here and you had to go like that with it, right? right? Like that's a full on action. This is a release. Like, stop doing something, okay? Oh, right. So as soon as I stop powering my arms and I'm not holding onto the club super tight, the club releases. Okay. Just like if I went like this and I wanted to throw the club, I release things and the club goes. Right, right. I'm not actually, like, full-on throwing all the way to here. Yeah, okay. okay. So if we feel as though that the arm speed happens back here because you get it in transition without yeah. stopping, right? From there, feeling as though that you face the target, the ball's going to take off. So practicing the shorter finish allows you to decel the arms to excel the club. So if I was like sitting on the hood of your car, I feel going 100 down the highway. You hit the brakes to the car, I go flying. Hit the brakes to the car, that goes flying. So short finishes in order, to, in order to let the club get into the ground and not skip off the ground because this goes too fast for too long. Okay, turn arms out, yeah. Okay, so give me two practice swings. Arms out, one club, don't let them get behind you over there. Okay, now if I stood here like this, I don't want your arms and club to get to this club right here. So swing through. Good. Hold it there. More turn. So your thighs. Good. Arms low. Soften. There we go. That's where I want you to try and finish. Okay. One more time. We'll build up on that afterwards, but for now, we're going to saw it off. Okay? And turn. And hit the brakes to the arms. There. That was really good. Okay. okay. One more time. So it's like this knee has to get all the way over that foot so both of your pockets face the target. Yeah, not bad. Now brush the ground a little bit on this one. Let the club hit the ground. That was awesome. Okay, hit one just like that at that speed. So when the, if I timed your swing from when the club left the ball until it got back, yeah. it's way too long. Sweet. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why you have to feel like you accelerate your arms for too far. Because we're not getting our change in direction. Okay. One of the big, like, Bryson DeChambeau did three things to increase his club head speed by like 30%, right. which is massive. Yeah. And the second thing that, of those three is changing direction harder. Sergio Garcia changes direction as hard as he can. Like all of those, John Rahm, even though he doesn't take it back very far, he changes direction really, really hard, which is why I can carry it 320 from a swing that only goes this far. So the change in direction is massive. So if we get back here and we make the top of the swing like, a, like an event, like we have to get there and everything stops at the top, that's when we get in trouble.
So, yeah, and it's once you feel like your body turns to take the club back, yeah. right? Before the club finishes its backswing, already start getting your pockets toward the target. So how far into a backswing can you go keeping your shoulders and arms soft, right? Like take it back and keep everything soft and smooth and no squeeze or tension. Good. And now all the way to where your pockets face the target. Good. So your action is really good. You know, like if, if you've got five guys on the assembly line doing the thing in your swing, yeah. it's really good. It's just a couple of them are asleep. So yeah. just like, let's get the tempo faster and you're going to find it, it's going to be better. Big turn, arms go out and away. Okay. One more time. Another way for us to put this and just yeah. Referencing for where you are, yeah. set up to your shot for me. So I need this space yeah. to maintain. And if your arm crosses your chest too far, we yeah. kind of get into trouble there. So start moving the body back. Okay, just the body, keep turning, keep turning, Good. keep turning, keep turning. See how I made like a 90 degree angle here? Yeah. But if this gets too much across your chest, you've gone too far across behind you, and we're stuck over here. So keep turning, turn all this out, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Good. That's kind of the feel. Okay. That the body, right, so I start here with that 90 degree angle in my arm, yeah. and if I turn my chest, it'll take my arm back that way. But if I cross my chest too much, that's where we get into trouble in the back. Too deep. Okay. So, like, one more time, set up to it. It might feel like your arm only gets even with this line, and it doesn't go behind it. Good. Really good, yeah. And just thump the club into the ground. No speed past the divot, only into the divot. So you've got some mechanical stuff with this, but practice swings should feel like it's one, two. One, two, right? Like turn legs, but that beat. One, two and just try and make that type of a, a tempo to it, and then all the stuff I think is just going to click. Yeah. But even the right mechanics, right? Even if those five guys on the assembly line do the right thing, if they do it too slow, we don't get the right output. Okay. okay. So you're right. That's a lot of stuff to start with. Yeah. I'll let you marinate with it a little okay. bit, and I'll be back. We'll get him. Another practice swing. Let the club hit the ground. Hey, really good. Wow, come look at that.
Those are good. One more time, hit the ground. Okay, come take a look. Yeah, please. Nice, really nice. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Keep doing it. So give me the most over the top at whatever speed allows you to be the most over the top for this feeling. I like how we can take the words from the big red X in Golf Digest and make them work for you. More. Yeah. Not so much. Don't pause so long at the top. Come right back out over it. More. Look at that great divot. Well done. Okay. Come look. I get brave. Okay. So take it up. Oh, geez. Yeah, I know. Take it up to the top. You should be able to go over my head because you're trying to feel like good. Good. Now, how do you go out and across without chopping my head off? More. Way more. more. Yeah. So up to the top. Good. And go. Okay. Come watch. Okay. Hit the ground. Tease, tease. Oh, right here. No, good. I just want to have the same spot we get hit from so we don't have to change our station. Okay, so just make it happen, don't give it power, just wave at this. Keep going. Soften things up a little bit, like soften up your grip. Okay, come look. Yes, awesome. One more time. That was really good. Nice. One more. Soften the arms, turn the stomach. Awesome. Okay. More teas. Where'd they go? Let's do it.
Really, really good. Well done. Now, the goal of this is trying to feel like you can take it up to the top, <clears throat> that it's your pivot, that your body is what's putting the arms over here yeah. so you can keep things soft. Yeah. But when you go from here, even with the good strikes, when I see your arms swing up this way really fast, that arm speed so late in the game messes up our contact. Okay. So the arms really want to feel like they're soft. They go down to the ground, and the fact that you turn is what puts them on this side of the ball. I don't want you to put your arms on the right side of the golf ball. We'll get a couple tees in the ground just to make sure we have the same spot each time. I stood here, yeah. right? I want you to try to feel like your arms and club don't get to here. So you're going to slow them down way before this. So the arm speed definitely has a deceleration in part of it. Slowing them down speeds up the club head. Imagine me standing there. Whack! One more time. Yeah, like, well, not so much even more. Earlier. And if the, if the hands are holding onto the club lightly and the grip is, the wrists are loose, that club will snap through. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So ball starts a little bit to the right and curves hard to the left. Okay, one more time. Let's check your setup. Another one? It's also like kind of confused me because this time coming inside a bunch. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out because you were way inside with your, with the, with the irons, but you can't hit that ball flight inside. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure this out. If it doesn't feel good on the face, I won't watch it. <laughs> I remember hearing a story about Mo Norman, and Mo talked about he hit one ball out of bounds once in 11 years. And the people that heard him say that story, you know, as the stories go, because, you know, his stories are like fairy tales now, um, they said that as soon as he hit the ball, he knew it was gone, and the other ball was already in the air before the first ball hit the ground.
ball's too far forward in your stance, bring it back, keep going. There you go. Okay. that what we've been talking about with the driver yeah. trying not to let the arms go too far when you have the when you're holding the handle of the driver and you're pulling it across the cross too long that's what's leaving the face behind and when the face when the club head is behind the grip it's obviously going to be open right. so this is going to be one where you feel again the arm stop sooner to let the club head catch up to the handle and it's going to feel like you have to flip it a bit yeah. but shit like phil mickelson and vj let go of their bottom hand they flip it so hard so you can't tell an average golfer to flip it when two of the best golfers to ever play flip it right. they just flip it at a better time than we do more so here I got this stick and if I pulled the handle of this stick too far hear the sound okay and here I am stopping it when I stop it that's what gives me this I can't make that happen with it not moving my hands but the second that I move my hands I lose the whip down there so it has to feel like it's going left-handed here. It's going to go stomach first, right? Really turn the stomach first, and then... Yeah. And you can see it, that if you stop your hands before the ball, the thing bends into the ball. Right. Good. Harder. Take it back farther. Yeah, louder. Louder. Good. So, two places that long drivers break their club. Over their shoulder on the follow through, and into the ball because they stop the grip so hard the shaft breaks. So the longest guys in the world understand the whole decel of the arms to hold the grip back so this thing can kick out and smash it. But because they're turning so hard, it makes it look like they're over here. Louder. Yeah, get those wrists in there to whip that thing. So, we got arms go out, stomach turns to take things back. So take it back like that, over the top, and then whip. Put it all together. Yeah. I bet this swing feels shorter than what you're used to. I rarely ever teach anybody to make longer golf swings, right? Like maybe a little bit take the hands higher in the back swing, yeah. but I've never told anybody to swing further through on their follow through. Like 50% of the people I'm trying to slow down for how long they're driving their arms past. Because if you're pulling that grip so long, you over lag it. Lag, 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 lag all the way past the ball. I have to feel like this thing stops back here to get going. You know, and I demonstrate it by basically hitting a shot and leaving the club in the divot, and the ball goes just as far as normal. Right? People ask, me, why didn't you finish your swing? Like, why are you holding it off? And I put myself right next to Tommy Fleetwood and Dustin Johnson, who are all right like this at the end of their swing. With the driver, it might go farther because there's more speed, but to hit a ball off the ground with flight and direction, it's such a shorter follow through. Let that club head pass your hands. Or make the club head pass your hands. One of the two right now. Good. See what I mean? Yeah. It's gonna feel like it flips, but all, you, all you're trying to do is get the club back to straight where it started its setup. Right. Right, so like, I mean, I'm trying to put shaft lean into him. I'm trying to get him to get that club leaning forward more. You're the total opposite. Yeah, okay. I'm like going like this. Totally. 
because your arms are trying to power the club for too long. And since you're holding onto the grip, that's what's getting dragged. Oh, sorry. Third place guys break the club in, this, in draw, long drives, break the club. They break it in the grip. By trying to hold, by trying to get the grip to go that way, they break the grip. Right? If I go like this so hard, right, I'm, I'm pulling back on one and pushing the other way on the other, the grip snaps in the middle. So there's a bunch of force and a bunch of action torques in that. Just try to let it happen. <laughs>